I was born to dance, dance So go and tie strings to my hands, hands You could only need a rubber pop, 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 pet I will always be your pop, 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 pet I was born to dance, dance So go and tie strings to my hands, hands You could only need a rubber pop, 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 pet I will always be your pop, 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 pet Hello to the doll that I am now I'm happy that you made me how you planned out Little did I know I needed that you better And daddy got to watch me go, go, go Oh, you tried to scrub my head It's still empty You tried to tighten my strings Oh, so strictly You want to pull my undies down And it was so fun You playing with my bum I was born to dance, dance So go and tie strings to my hands, hands You could only have a pop, 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 pet I will always be a pop, 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 pet I was born to dance, dance So go and tie strings to my hands, hands You could only have a pop, 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 pet I'll gladly be a pop, 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 pet Well, hello there, naughty boys and girls. It is I, Disaster Welcome to the Tasty Ibbits Podcast. Here, we are all about the drag, the art, the trash, and the comedy. <laughs> This episode, we're gonna do a deep and raunchy dive into the puppet pool with master puppeteer Matt Scott of Rasputin's Marionettes. In fact, Matt gave us so much tasty behind the curtains goodies that we had to slice it into two parts, or should I say, cut it into two fatty lines on top of the urinal. This part, part two, is all about Matt's salacious professional career with Frickshaw Follies and the Boulet Brothers, and a new project called Sugar Bitch Goulash in which I play an important part. If you haven't heard it yet, go back and listen to part one, which details Matt's influences and history. Really important puppet lore. So sit down and shut up, you stupid snot-nosed children, because the puppet show is about to begin. <laughs> So that leads us to another place. It got me to thinking about you working with the Boulets. So when I met you, you were right in that zone where you had started to be the manager of the fault line and you met the Boulets that way. How did they come to know that you were a puppeteer and how did they invite you to do their shows? I was doing a club at the fault line in tandem with Dragula. We had monthly clubs every Saturday, and one of the monthly promoters dropped out. And so I was doing a club either the week before or the week after. In any case, not in a lineup I would want to be in front of or behind. Like, I need some space. Because my club was not the same as theirs in any means, but it was also dark-themed. It was called Inferno. And one of the things that we included was drag and variety performers, circus performers, 
performers oh, and, cool. and puppetry. So Neat. I would always be a part of that. Glenn Allen. Oh, I love Glenn Allen, yes. Was our, our resident drag queen. Glenn Allen, so good. Anybody out there should check them out. The amazing. Oh, the amazing makeup artist. That's that's right, yes. And he brought it so hard every week. One of the best things about the shows. And I would always build a new puppet for every, because we themed them as well. And I would have to build a new puppet. And it was always a rush to create this whole entire new club. And they just got bigger and bigger and bigger as we went along. And I never wanted to do it. The owner of the Fault Line came to me and said, you're creative. Why don't you do a little something to fill next Saturday? The promoter pulled out. So I did. And it was actually somewhat successful. It was well attended. Mm -hmm. um, And the owner saw a lot of potential in it. So he's like, do the next one and then do the next. Can you take the next Saturday? Can you take the next? It took a year and a half of doing Inferno and I was so over it. It was so much. It would seem like it would be super strenuous. It was incredibly strenuous. But if we were doing one a month for a year and a half, yeah, the 18 that we did, I look back on it now and think that was one of the most fun, most creative periods that I have had in my career. I loved it so much, even though it didn't get a lot of traction, didn't put me on any maps. But the work that went into it was ridiculous. Our our finale was Club Inferno presents Voodoo Swamp. It was a Voodoo Swamp themed show or themed event. And I really went the distance. I went all throughout the entire neighborhood of East LA with a machete chopping down all the tropical foliage, anything that could simulate a Louisiana bayou and completely decked out the entire back patio. I turned the small brick bars that would be in, that were in the middle of the patio space Mm -hmm. into uh, sinking crypts in a swamp. Wild. It was insane. Then I myself was done up in a full Dr. John top hat, Bones. You mean Dr. Teeth? Ah, uh, Dr. Teeth. I forgot I was By even wearing people this. People out there, Matt Scott is wearing a Dr. Teeth. And the Electric Mayhem. And the Electric Mayhem t shirt. You know, I didn't even realize I was wearing the shirt for this interview. <laughs> it's so perfect. That was it. <laughs> and right on the top of my favorite, Jan playing the oh. guitar and animals there and everything. So good. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, it was Dr. John. It was on stilts in full voodoo attire with live chickens, swinging live chickens and cleansing the people down, swiping chickens over them and chanting. And it was insane. That sounds totally insane. And the Boulay brothers, more often than not, would pop in and just see the fuck this crazy asshole has done now. <laughs> and and they were always impressed. They loved what How I was doing. How could they not be? They loved what I was doing. They just felt it was so out there. And so they saw my puppetry firsthand. They saw, you know, me at my creative height just throwing everything at the fucking wall. Plus, as the manager of the bar, when Dragula did come around and we were hosting Dragula for the night, they were bringing in crowds. You know, they had lines around the block. And at the end of the night, the liquor operations manager would always want to hand them a bill for the night, you know, generously discounted by like 10 percent. And I was all no, 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 no. And of course, the Boulay brothers weren't standing for it. And there would be fights in the bar after hours over the liquor bill and I would simply go into the office and using the main computer just delete the whole thing I'm like you guys your tab's been paid don't worry about it wow they owe you big (laughs) that's probably thousands and thousands of dollars just the competition everybody got a pitcher of beer to chug on stage you know, it, it wasn't necessarily four contestants. It could be eight contestants. I don't know if you remember this. Like almost anybody who signed up got a pitcher of beer that they had to chug. And That's true. just that alone. And I'm not, not their personal drinks, not the drink tickets that they're handing out. They spent a lot on alcohol, but they brought the crowd. They generated the That's income. Yeah. We could ride the whole month at that bar off of the night that they brought in. Wow. So... Their tab was fucking comped. That was yeah, of course. Of so, course. Uh, but I, at least I made that my fight with everybody else at the bar, not theirs. They were free to go. So we developed a rapport where we just had a mutual artistic respect, and you know, mm-hmm. you pull my finger, I'll pull yours. Is that what they say? Is that? <laughs> 
Sounds good to me. I think it's more like push a fist rather than pull a finger. So that I was on their radar, and whenever they had a spot in a show or an event at Precinct, they were like, hey, you want to jump in and do a number? And Everybody's so into it, too. It's so unusual. First of all, to see something like this at a nightclub very unusual and also for everybody to be so into it it's also another unusual thing there's like drag performers going on and it's mostly like lip sync and crazy numbers with you know syncopated dancing and stuff and here comes a puppet show <laughs> right. and everybody loves it just as much as everything else right you know for me though it's not that uncommon because <gasps> the lineage that I can claim my puppet lineage is old queens doing nightclub puppets that's true as far back as recorded history in Hollywood. Maybe back into the Hellenistic times. Possibly. I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, I'm sure. They found puppets in ruins. Puppets, masks, they were doing all of it. They were doing everything that that me and you do thousands of years ago. Archaeologists, they always find the popular things, but I wonder what was going on underground puppetry thousands of years ago. There's something interesting to think about. What do you want archaeologists to discover of disasterinas in a thousand years? Hopefully, all the marble sculptures that I expect people will be making of me soon. Get building, people. <laughs> I'm not going to look this good for so long, okay? So you need to get out there and start chiseling away, people. Will it have arms? Well, I mean, like, uh, like, will it be classic, like Venus de Milo? Did Venus de Milo originally have arms and they fell off? Oh, yeah, yeah. They, they fell, fell off so clean that it almost looks like a mannequin. Maybe they want to take my arms off because they would be doing something really salacious and awful. But then they confuse you with Shea St. John. That's true. That's true. Yeah, and then you have no legacy. I want forearms. You know, the Hindus get to have all the fun. I don't think so. Mm. I want forearms, too. They get all the fun and all the arms. (laughs) And now, a short break for an important message. Hi, this is Sparkle Bart the Mushroom Gnome. You are listening to the Tasty Ear Bits Podcast. Help support our endeavor by joining our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash cold sluts on fire. One word. I'm Snorkel Bart the Mushroom Gnome. The Mushroom Gnome, the Mushroom Gnome, the Mushroom Gnome, the Mushroom Gnome. Snorkel Bart the Mushroom Gnome, the Mushroom Gnome, the Mushroom Gnome. And now, back to Matt Scott and Rasputin's marionettes. So, that leads us to the Boulay Brothers TV show. They do a TV show now, and they recently did a season, season four, and one of the episodes, you got to do puppets of the four finalists. Well, now, what was that like? That was so much fun and so anxiety-inducing. Well, we had discussed the project months in advance, but it really started as just an idea that was floating back and forth between us for so many years of, God, one of these days we really want to have Boulay Brothers puppets of ourselves, which is to have those puppets. And I'm like, that would be great. They could like perform at shows and stuff. Won't that be fun? And then, haha, yes, it would. And it finally got to manifest. And as it moved forward... We would have conversations because we didn't know what they were going to do in the show. Only that I was going to finally make those Boulay Brothers puppets and then we're going to do something with them. We had talked about the episode or a choice of episodes that these two puppets could host one or the other of the themes that were presented in that episode. And we would work the concept of the puppet show itself after that. It just so happened that the build time for all of these puppets was going to be too long to make it in time for one of the proposed. And so it had to be the episode that came later in the season. Mm, okay. So it was a timeline thing. And it just so happened to be clowns, which was so much fun to yeah. work with. And I felt that puppets, clowns, circus, all of this just, it just fits so well. It was just a gear so easily greased and falling into its wells. It was so perfect. First of all, these drag performers, beautiful outfit, beautiful makeup, they're all doing clown drag for this episode. And then you are doing the versions of them as marionettes. It's so clever and it's so well done. And you know, the puppets look, I'm going to say it, the puppets look better than those bitches, okay? It's true. And I'll tell you why. The Boulay brothers sent me 
screen grabs from the dailies through text message. And so I got a fuzzy picture sent through low res and I just could not zoom or squint enough to figure out what I was supposed to be building. And I had to just wing it. And I didn't know who any of them were at the time. And I couldn't tell any details in some of the makeup. Hoso's makeup is so complex. That's true. And I'm zooming in on a tiny picture that's low res to try to figure it out. I had to rely on my intuition or I really fell back on how do I capture like a caricature artist, you know, who mm-hmm. draws who draws the giant head version of you on a skateboard at the pier. Like I had to just pick those couple of elements that were going to draw out the character of what I was looking at. The first one that I went with was Sigourney. OK, because on first getting all four of the pictures, Sigourney was the one that jumped out at me the most. I felt it was so exceptionally beautiful. Oh, yes. Especially the makeup. The makeup. And because, mind you, I don't have a very clear picture to work off of. Of the four, hers worked with this, like, haze. It, she looked to me like a clown version of a young Lucille Ball at her most glamorous. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah I From see the that. blue eyes and the lashes and the red hair. The early pictures of Lucille Ball you would look at and think, that can't possibly be she was a beauty queen. She was. She was gorgeous. And a, so I was like... Girl, a guy in a gob. Check it out. <laughs> the greatest thing you can do for me is leave. It'll be a pleasure. I'd take a pail and a mop and crawl on my hands and knees before I'd work for a, a midget-minded stuff shirt like you. Answer that phone. So Sigourney was the first one that I went off because I felt like it didn't have to... I didn't have to rely on pulling out so much detail. At least I could get started on this project because everything was very soft. As I moved on, I... I, d- I, I always have this problem. Whenever I do drag puppets, I did a Trixie Mattel video. That's right. Yeah, yeah. I saw that. Yeah. That was really um, cool. And when Trixie asked, I, that began the conundrum, the artistic conundrum as a sculptor. Do I sculpt the face and head of the person that's doing the drag and then paint it their drag? Mm. Or do I build the face? Face that they're trying Basically, to the, create. The character. Right. Do I build the character as the character? And that was one that I really had to find my path with the Boulet brothers. And one of my favorite comments on Reddit was somebody said, he could have fucking just made a two of the same puppet and nobody would have cared, but you can actually tell the difference between these two and it's fucking brilliant. If you make an identical puppet, they don't, it wouldn't be the Boulet brothers because they're not identical twins, you know? Right. Well, you just took the joy out of that comment because I was excited (laughs) that somebody was able to see the difference. Uh, But they are supposed to be twins. So I guess I know where he was coming from. I was just really glad, you know, I'm, I'm prepared for the worst. I'm all, well, let's see how Reddit has destroyed me today. (laughs) And I didn't see any negative comments whatsoever. People went apeshit for that. It was magical. The episode was so fun. First of all, everybody loves clowns. Everybody really into like scary clowns. So you get a bunch of scary drag clowns. And then all of a sudden they have like little doppelgangers. They have little mini me's Mm -hmm. on the marionettes (laughs) and everything. All of a sudden, wait a minute, these queens all get shrunk down or something? Or is like some magic spell has gone over them and now they're all puppets or something? It's really interesting. That's such a cool episode. And you did such a good job and so colorful. And how lucky is that to be a drag performer on one of these shows and then somebody does this brilliant puppet of you. That must have been such a treat. Hoso Teratoma, Dali, Saint the Creator, and Sigourney Beaver. I hope they have called you and thanked you for the amazing work that you've done. Let me tell you this. Creating puppets is an incredibly involved and very cathartic process for me. And so as I was building all of the puppets, I was also building the show that I do for the Boulet Brothers Halloween Ball every year. And I was so completely overwhelmed with everything. And I was 100% immersed in a Boulet Brothers world. 
And that's when you bring out the black cat, okay? <laughs> the, the sexy black cat, okay? I don't have time. Get the sexy black cat out here. Uh, yeah, I don't think I'll be building a new show. I'm just going to probably do the sexy black cat for Halloween <laughs> at the ball this year. <laughs> just the black cat on repeat. But it was, it was brilliant. I've never been more proud of something that me and, and everybody who worked with me on that show pulled off. It was insanity. Uh, it was maybe the beginning of October, maybe even a week in, in October, through October, that they called me up and to just to check in on how the puppets were coming for the episode. And I was like, yeah, 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 they're great. They're great. They're great. Cause I have all this time now. Cause COVID was making it like people were talking. It was kind of surging again. Mm -hmm. And so I said, cause we're not going to, I don't have to worry about the Halloween ball. And they're all, what do you mean? <laughs> oh, you're wait, you're really going to do it. They're all absolutely full steam ahead. And now for some more very important commercial messages. From Out TV. Do you need release? Buckle up, baby girl. The fun's about to begin. Yeah! Oh. <laughs> this here is Crazy Town, and you're the mayor of it. Why does the party always end up in the kitchen? I'm here to probe your black hole. Eat your heart out, bitch. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Let's get some drinks. I had my heart set on a pizza, though. Fresh as fuck. Mmm, mmm. Brace yourself. <laughs> what is this thing? It's a party up in here. Don't be sorry, be better. I'm still the baddest demon around. I'm a sexy yin yang, motherfucker. Feels like the real thing. <laughs> then freaking me the fuck out. <laughs> Let's break this bitch. What the fuck thing again? <laughs> <laughs> Six exciting episodes now available at outtv.com or just go to sadopsychiatrist.com for a direct link. Also available on the OutTV Apple TV channel. Sign up now, the first week is free. And also, also available on demand in the UK and Ireland via the Fruit TV, that's F R O O T dot TV channel. Use the code Disasterina for a free month. Back to part two of part two of Matt Scott and Rasputin's marionettes. And don't forget, there is a part one that you can go listen to. So go listen, because that's part one. And you can get part one and two of one. And now this is part two of two. Okay? So Matt Scott... I was so intrigued when you contacted me about doing a voiceover for a project you had going on. You were going to be doing a play, a puppet doing a play, and you wanted me to be doing one of the voices. And I was very interested in doing it because I'd never actually really done any voiceover like that before, you know, like had a, you know, a voiceover reel or anything like that. So I was like, oh, I totally want to do this. First of all, I love Matt Scott and I love what they do. And what was that project? So the name of that project is Sugar Bitch Goulash, which... I fell in love with the second I heard those those two words. It was written by a dear, dear friend of mine many, 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 many years ago. And because of personal reasons, he ended up putting it on a shelf and refused to let it see the world and or the world see it. And I spent many years begging him to let me have the script. And it wasn't until December of 2019 that after so long, he finally broke down and said, you are the only person that I would trust to do anything with the script that I would cast my seal of approval upon. So you may finally have this thing. 
and he lived in San Francisco. I went up to San Francisco in January. We pulled tons of pages out of various locked desks, secretaries and, and armoires and pieced it all together and did the first read of it. And for the first time, I got to hear it all the way through. And I I knew that this was absolutely the project that I wanted to work on next. What is it based on? It is the story of two old women who in 2006 were arrested on charges of fraud. And while they were in the interrogation room, they were under surveillance, but they thought that they were alone and they incriminated themselves on homicide charges. The thing that's so amazing about them is that it, they didn't have a huge body count. It wasn't particularly gruesome. In fact, it probably could have just gone under the radar for myself if it wasn't that these two old ladies were not such insane characters. <laughs> One was a, an, a, a Hungarian immigrant. Olga Rutterschmidt. Olga Rutterschmidt. And the other was a Texan, rich, uh, Christian, Karen type who moved from Texas to Santa Monica, uh, had a lot of money and was just kind of a, a local nightmare. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and the two of them became friends. The only, We know very little about them, but we do know that the two of them met and became friends in the 1980s in a women's gym. Uh, most people that knew them said that they never really understood why they were ever friends to begin with, uh, but a Assumed that they remained friends because they were just too old to give a shit anymore and didn't want to bother finding new friends. Um, and so on the basis of that friendship, this whole story was written, just kind of running around and tying together the thread of events that tell the story of them and how they became two old ladies with life sentences that they're because still alive and, and currently serving. It was a big deal. It was all over the news. They were doing like special edition, you know, the uh, the killing lady senior citizens and stuff like that. So it was like sensational news. Yeah. Um, in fact, it was even billed as, or the news, the media had labeled it um, arsenic and old lace, but without <laughs> Cary Grant. And I thought that was just genius when a true crime story is currently getting that kind of press. It's just great. Or getting that sort of title assigned to it. And without Cary Grant, well, who could we insert here? And it very obviously was the Golden Girls. So it's mm. it's very much a it, it's almost a Golden Girls gone bad or worse. Gone, gone worse. Gone worst. <laughs> Once you had me read the script, I became enthralled with it just as much as you had. And you had sort of zhuzhed it up into different scenes. And uh, it was kind of interesting because, you know, Olga Rutterschmidt, the character that I was going to be doing the voiceover for, uh, is a Hungarian immigrant. And I assumed that you wanted me to do the voice because I was doing Disasterina voices, like I can do voices. But once I tried to do a Hungarian voice, I realized that Disasterina is not a Hungarian person. <laughs> I, you know, I always said uh, Disasterina is from an undetermined foreign place. And that place is definitely not Hungary because... I really had to research this. I really wanted to have a true Hungarian accent. And there's just a certain way that you speak this accent in order to make it realistic. And it actually took me a little while to figure it out. And once I got deep into it and we were doing Zoom calls and, and uh, you know going through the script and everything, I realized once I had little events with Disasterina and stuff I was doing with Disasterina, that my brain was screwed up because I couldn't get back to the Disasterina <laughs> voice. They are so different. I mean, you would probably listen, people out there probably listen to Disasterina and listen to my doing Olga Rutterschmidt and say, oh, they're very similar. They're totally different. So I just find that really fascinating. What I, what I love and really why I came to you to begin with was... Um, was not for the voice, but for the delivery um, mm. or sometimes the the subtlety in between the deliverance. Um, you, you have a nuance 
especially when you're just let loose and allowed to uh, allowed to you know explore it. Um, one of my favorite moments, uh, one of my favorite Olga moments in the whole show is when she's not talking, but she's <laughs> reacting to things that Helen's saying with just small grunts and groans. <laughs> and that wasn't in the script. That was just, you know, you threw that in. And I and I'll tell you, it got the biggest when I premiered it. it, it those were some of the biggest laughs. The Helen, at the, I'm sorry, Olga at the lockers and the Olga in church when when Helen's just going, 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 when Helen won't shut the fuck up. <laughs> and Olga's right there going, ah. <laughs> But Olga is, is made for those grunts. You know, in real life, they were, they must have been just talking to themselves all the time. All the and, time. And just such an angry, wretched person. But doing an audio play, you do sort of need the back and forth. You need to have to fill up the space is a little bit with something. Mm -hmm. So, and also you have to give some sort of visual about what people are actually doing. So it's like when Helen Golay is like browbeating Olga, Olga, of course, it's just such a sourpuss, must have been muttering shit under her <laughs> breath. So I just inserted that in there. Yeah, and it's genius. It is so nice to be helping people and being part of the Lord's army. I feel like a soldier for Jesus. It makes my heart happy to be doing charity and service for our community. You do remember why we are here, huh? Of course I do, Olga. We're here to do the Lord's work. Finding someone to kill is Lord's work? No, you ghoul. We are here to help someone. And if we're able to help ourselves in the process, then we're simply living in the light of Jesus' love. Jesus would want everyone to have the things they need. That's why he made bread and fish for everyone. And by giving these hideous people bread, we are about as Christ-like as it gets, Olga dear. Oh, you are really something else. You make yourself up a real fancy way of making your fancy self up, like you are not a person who isn't so fancy for a Christian. What in God's name are you trying to say? When will you learn English? How long have you been in this country? Because it certainly doesn't show. What is this ghastly thing you're even wearing? It's terrifying. It's traditional orthodox clothes. You said dress like Jesus is watching. Well, you look like a specter. An absolute ghoul. And what is that on your face? It's ashes. You said we need to look pious. I put for Ash Wednesday. Ash Wednesday is in February. It is July. And you look like a fool, honestly. I don't know why I continue to work with you. I believe your Catholicism is discrediting me in the eyes of Jesus. Dinner roll? Christ be with you. Well... At least I look like a religious person, not like soccer poodle and clown act for Christian puppet show. <laughs> Can we stick to plan? I do not want to be here all day. Well, that is fine by me. The less time I spend with you, the better off we both are. Now, how about him? Ugh, he smells. Oh, I guess you've become immune to your own scent. And what scent is it? Paprika number five. Ugh. You are want to talk. Your breath is fucking hot. Okay, 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 Olga, please. Putting your vulgarity on full display in the house of the Lord is unbecoming. I don't want to do this anymore. Can we keep to the plan? And what is plan? Finding the right person to be the recipient of our charity and kindness, of course. You? Charitable and kind? Oh, that's rich, honey. Enjoy a soup in God's name. Dinner roll. Have a blessed day now. Oh, God, I swear to God I've had it with you. Now, what about him? Too ethnic. You have got to be shitting me. Is that why your breath is so bad? Don't start with that again. The sooner we find someone, the sooner we can end this day, and I won't have to look at your face anymore. Oh, of course not. They don't want our little Helen go late to have to do anything she don't want to do. Just like whole plan. I do all the work, and you take all the credit. 
and the money. There you go again, Olga. I swear on all my years I've never met someone as greedy as you. Maybe you can keep yourself in check today. Greed is one of the deadly sins, after all. Murder is not deadly sin. Here you go. Have some soup from Jazos. Well, bless your heart. Dinner roll? Will you shut your huge ugly mouth before you get us both in trouble? Now, I told you already, it is most definitely not murder. We're delivering unfortunate people into the arms of their savior. Ha! Save your own ass. Olga, you are gauche. I feel like I've been over this enough. And if those giant chimpanzee ears of yours can't take it all in, I might just have to do this myself. Well, that would be fast. In 15 years, I have not seen you do nothing for yourself. Never! What? There you go again. One of these days, your stupid, nonsensical mouth is going to open up and all your unacclimated immigrant bullshit is going to backfire on you. But for right now, we need each other, so can we please just stick to the plan? And what is plan? God damn it! You witless! Enjoy your soup. Amen! Bless you, dear! And now, for one more tiny little break, okay? Mitchell Dobb here for Cold Sluts on Fire. No more waiting. The Dr. Sato enamel pin is here. Put it on your business suit, fedora, or your straitjacket. Let your friends and enemies know you ally yourself with the wicked and the perverted. Free domestic shipping from coldslutsonfire.com. Now back to Matt Scott of Rasputin's Marionettes. You 100% pulled the character out of it through vocal inflection, and I couldn't be more happy with the end result. It was so much fun to be able to work on that project with you. It really carried me through that project at times because uh, as I was building the puppets and the sets and everything, trying to get everything done, I would lose steam, even creatively speaking. I don't want to do this anymore. But then um, but then you would come in with this voice that <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I could not stop laughing. It was such a joy doing it, and it's so much fun, and I feel like I learned a new skill. I really had to dive in, and be an actor, it's different doing, you know, Disaster and has like a set uh, amount of like little uh, idiosyncrasies that I do and all this sort of stuff, but Olga's completely different, so I really had to act, I really had to study the character sort of like old school, you know, right. like, like an actual actor would. Yeah, and, then, and that's just the voice, too. You know, it's a lot of props to, to voiceover actors because it's, it's, it's not, not that it's easy. not easy work. Yeah. You would actually be a really good voiceover actor, but a lot of people have that wonderful voice. But then it is called voice acting. Right. You know? Right. You, you have really to convey. Have to you have to really convey what's happening through through the voice. You know, you have to know when to throw fear and anger and all kinds of inflections and emotions into a sentence. And I don't know. It was a great process. I'm glad we got to go through that together. Interestingly, you mentioned Make the Puppets. Yeah, there are two characters in, in the puppet show. But with you... Because you have to switch the scenes and everything, you can't all of a sudden get the puppet and put a new coat on it. Right. You have to do a completely new puppet. Right, and our story also spans the course of 30 years. We have puppets of them meeting in the locker room in the 80s, uh, and eventually we'll have puppets of them currently serving time in prison at the ages of 98 and 96, respectively, I believe, since the last time I did the math. Um, so I'm glad you had so much fun on that project because soon we're going to have to jump on part two and finish the That's story. Right. The, the script is so good, but I think you needed to shorten it a little bit, take some scenes out just in order to get it done so you can get it going at the events that you were planning to do. Right. When I premiered it, I had a one hour slot to perform in, which meant that uh, I could only do the first act. So I devised a cliffhanger. Um, style of ending 
which was great. Um, people love cliffhangers. People love a right. cliffhanger. Uh, and then broke it to them that there would that this was the end of the story and they would have to come back and see another show to get the end rather than just go have a bathroom break, hit the bar and return to their seats. Um, and I love that. So, uh, But it was nice too because I also was forced to create that, that intermission. So when the show is finished, it will be a whole hour and 40 minute runtime. Uh, but the chunk that we've got so far is so good. Now, people out there are going to be really interested in you. How do people get in touch with you? How do they hire you to do shows? And how do they get you to go to their venue and do a puppet show for them? I can always be found on Instagram at Rasputin's Marionettes. Just an aside, where did you, why did you decide on that title? Uh, that's another real interesting story. A f- friend of mine named me Rasputin. Uh, a long time ago because I was a member of the Golden Dawn and then joined the OTO after that. I'm familiar with the OTO. Our tax person is like a bishop of OTO. Yeah, they move in the shadows. For anybody who doesn't know what the OTO is, it is the Order Templi Orientis, which is uh, an occult school that was put together uh, by Aleister Crowley. And I was a member of the OTO for a while and have passed through many different um, occult schools of thought and at the time that I met this friend he was a musician in a band and his band was amazing but they weren't getting off the ground and I was practicing alchemy at the time and so I made a um, an elixir of Jupiter uh, gave it to him and uh, their band flew they became huge Um, ever since then he was like dude you're like fucking Rasputin you're the magic man and so he named me Rasputin and it was Shortly after that, that I uh, built Freak Show Follies, and I was like, well, how am I going to promote this thing? What am I going to call it? And he was like, why don't you just call yourself, like, Rasputin's Marionettes? And I was like, okay, that works in the, at the time. Now I'm just Rasputin's Marionettes. People, sometimes people think I am Rasputin, as in mm. Rasputin of... You're the soul of, of Rasputin. Uh, I do have... I'm very drawn to Rasputin. Um, I have a lot of similarities with the character... With the man. Were, were you once rolled up into a carpet and thrown into a lake? I can't be killed, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I can't. People have tried. I have tried. And it, it, it doesn't happen, so... You're holding back. You know, I need to get the elixir of Uranus. <laughs> you did the Jupiter, and now I need the elixir Ur- of Uranus. Yes. The elixir of Uranus... <laughs> <laughs> is basically the philosopher's stone. Or is it the philosopher's bone? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. I'm sorry, I interrupted you about how to contact you. Instagram, it's Rasputin's Marionettes, but with no punctuation. Okay. And no spaces. No underscore. Or um, Rasputin Puppets at Gmail. Shoot me a message. Tell me your ideas. Rasputin Puppets, no S. This interview is so cool. Do you have anything you'd like to say out there? Anything special? Anything we didn't cover that you would want to talk about? Normalize puppets. Yeah. I mean, puppets should be part of everybody's everyday life. I should see more puppets on public transportation. I should see puppets in, in at least one drag number at every drag show. You're right. You know, I think people are getting this computer bullshit and they're like, oh, I'm going to do 3D everything. I'm going to do 3D animation. I don't need to do anything real anymore. Fuck puppets. But puppets are way more interesting. Absolutely. If you don't believe me, go look at Gremlins. Go watch Gremlins. Go watch Return of the the Jedi. Uh, Sorry, Empire. Go and watch Empire Strikes Back. Or Team America. That Yoda shit. That's a puppet, man. Team America is fucking good, too. Team America, another good one. Oh, actually... Dark Crystal. Actually, Scott Land just hit me up, who did all the puppets for Team America. We're talking about me going and doing some puppet classes at at his shop out in Las Vegas. That would be a great idea. You should totally do that. Yeah, so... um, yeah, anybody who wants to stay in touch with Rasputin's marionettes, you can get puppet classes, you can have puppet commissions, you can have a puppet tell your boss to fuck off, whatever you need. Hashtag puppet life. Hashtag puppet life. All right, we'll leave it there. Thank you so much, Matt Scott. I love you so much. Oh, it was my pleasure. Thank you.
music for the podcast by Dr. Stevo. Go to drstevo.com. D O C T O R S T E E V O.com. I would like to personally thank our fantastic Patreon supporters. You are the ones who are keeping this podcast growing and going. Love you. Joseph Reich, Jeffrey Gallet, Indra Lonstein, Amy Marsh, Oliver J, Jeremy McNabb, Keith Ferguson, Annalyn Bond, Rollerblaze, Sazzy C, Silvana Ahmed, Tom, Ali, Carrie Wolf, Eric Peterson, John Gidbent, Renee Redanius, Melissa Sarah, Nikini Kill, Julia Levine, Rhea, Seaman Law, Spencer Montoya, Story Nagel, and Katrina Miller. Thank you so much, and remember, Patreon supporters, if you have any questions for the magical disaster Nick Queen herself, just go ahead and send me a message to Patreon, and I will answer your question on the air on the podcast. Special perks for you! You want to be as wonderful as those people? Well, then go to Patreon, Patreon, I don't know how to fucking pronounce it, dot com forward slash cold sluts on fire. One word, give us plenty of your greenbacks. We need it. <laughs>